perfect. Hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> So, I received an email from one of you recently. Uh, That's a lie. She's got no emails from no one. That is not a lie. No one sends you emails. You know who you are. And um, apparently you find the concept of... If you know who you are, comment below. Just so I can prove that no one's going to comment they are. Thank you very much. Yeah, please do. Please do comment. Just to shut her up. Um... <laughs> In vivo gene cloning, right? And basically, apparently, the terminology is really convoluted, and I agree with that. It's uh, it's a it's a new uh, vocabulary they have to learn. So let's try to make it as simple as possible. Okay, so the premise is that oh, a new subscriber. Premise is that DNA has to replicate every time the cell a cell divides. So if a cell divides and then those cells divide and you have a load of dividing cells, you will have more DNA. So if you want to use that process of cell division as a replicating process for your DNA, then that's great. That will replicate the DNA. And so based on that, the idea is that you can design, engineer your own DNA for whatever purpose. Uh, that is not the DNA that, for example, a bacterium has. If you use E. coli as the host to replicate your DNA, then you want to insert a new DNA, uh, perhaps with a human gene in it, for no whatever cares. reason. That's it. So once you have your new design DNA, you can insert it in, you know, a few cells and then just let them grow. And then at the end of it, hey presto, you've got a lot of the DNA that you originally made. So you don't have to make a lot in the first place. Now the design part is one of the key parts, which is how do you design it? How does this work? And the concept is quite simple. It's like various fragments they ha that have compatible ends so that they can be joined in no particular order. Uh, and they can be interchanged in no particular order, so you can just jumble them up and assemble them how you want. And at the junction, at the ends, where the, these things can be joined, uh, the element of it that is compatible is obviously the, the DNA code um, that is the same at these ends, so that they can come together and be, be compatible and be, um, what's the word, complementary so that they can stick together. Now, how can this complementarity at these ends be achieved? Uh, you use restriction enzymes. What are restriction enzymes? They are enzymes that uh, can be naturally occurring in microorganisms that have already evolved to target specific parts, specific sequences on DNA, and then just cut them at that sequence. And the role of them is, of course, in uh, the defense of the host organism against invading organisms by chopping up the invading organism's DNA so that it can no longer grow and replicate and survive. Um, so that's why they're called restriction, um, because they restrict, right? Um, anyways, so, so if you use these enzymes to cut at specific sequences on your DNA code and you use it in multiple locations, and you use the same restriction enzyme that cut to the same sequence, you will end up with cut ends that are complementary. And if you do that on many pieces of DNA or whatever, you can just assemble them in whichever way because the ends will always be complementary. So you can have whatever gene you want, as long as it has the same sequence on the end, it can be joined to any other piece of DNA that, in, that encodes anything else that has a complementary bit at the end. Simple as that. And once those newly assembled pieces have come together, and this is usually on a plasmid, which is a circular piece of DNA found in bacteria uh, that they often use to exchange between themselves, regardless of their species or whatever, that often uh, include um, genes uh, that confer a resistance to antibiotics. Once you have that new plasmid circular piece of DNA with whatever stuff you put on it, uh, for whatever reason. Uh, once you have that, it's just a matter of doing the cloning part. And what is the cloning part? The cloning part is simply replicating your DNA many times, so you have more of it. Um, and of course, the way to achieve that is to simply um, transform, transform, transform a bacteria with with a with a plasmid, and you don't need a huge amount of bacteria. So you're only transforming a small number of bacteria with a small amount of your of your of your new plasmid. Uh, and then you just let them grow. And of course, that's very straightforward because they just grow by themselves. Uh, you put them in fairly basic media for them to grow. And then they just grow. And hey presto, all of a sudden you have way more cells and with them, way more of your DNA. 
Uh, now, of course, there's no guarantee that as the cells grow, they will keep the plasma that you gave them. It could be that they just they don't they don't take it up. They don't replicate it. They don't share it. They don't, you know, they could just lose it. So what do you do to make sure that the bacteria that you're growing actually all have the DNA that you put in the first small population of bacteria? It's simple. You just make sure to actually maintain or include the antibiotic resistance gene in your plasmid that you've inserted and always grow the cells in that particular antibiotic by adding it to the medium so that the only way the cells will survive is if they have your plasmid with that antibiotic resistance gene. And so any cells that lose it, that lose the plasmid or don't have the plasmid, will die in that antibiotic medium. And you know that the cells that grow and that have survived, uh, you can be pretty confident that they do have the new DNA that you inserted in them that includes the antibiotic resistant gene, as well as whatever gene you've included, uh, which could be anything. It could be a dye. It could be a protein, an enzyme, whatever. You can isolate the DNA to do something else with it. You can, you can simply use the DNA in the cells and, and, and express it and produce that dye in the cells or produce an enzyme in the cells or produce energy. whatever in the cells, energy in the cells. Yeah, very, very, very smart there, mother. That's how it goes. Uh, and it's uh, hopefully it's easier and more straightforward uh, than whatever else version you've come across. And this is the point where my sister was supposed to be behind my back, all cutesy-wootsy, like, kissy, bye! Come on, dude. Come back. I'm looking at a woman who's green. Get in here. She made me think green. What was I doing? So yeah, guys, hope this was useful. Kissy, bye. I was in 2K. Bye. I was in 2K. Let me eat my cake. <laughs> bye. Wow. Let me finish.